So we're going to run the track, and I'm going to demonstrate how you can get some other sounds out of this particular lick against this kind of groove. So you heard some of the things that I did. Let's break it down. I was just improvising. I started off actually playing. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a clash with that because the basic line is one, let two, let three. That F doesn't come in until the third beat. Your lick, the way I was playing it, one, let two, let three. You're previewing that. So for a moment, you're going to have the F, the F and the G ringing together. But it's okay. Throw a pinch harmonic on that. Then you do little variations. I mean, things coming out of your G minor pentatonic scale. Okay. Then for the C. See how I'm just taking that lick and using it as a springboard to get other things going. Then I started to fatten it up, played it kind of like Eric Johnson might play it, putting in little punctuations of power chords. Well, we need to look at some power chords. A power chord is a root and a fifth. So for the G, it's going to be any combination. Notice I said any combination of a G and a D. So what I suggest you do is take something you know. You see this. You probably already know that power chord. So that's root, fifth, root. You need to see your octaves because that helps you see more information on the neck. So you have a G here, a G here, and the octave G right there. Now you can bank on that. It'll always be like that. Sixth string, fourth string, second string. You could actually just play octaves. Okay? The fifth was the D. So you have the same formation. Those are the Ds. If you visualize the Gs, those three Gs, and those three Ds, you have G power chords. And it'll be this same formation right here. Or, and that's getting up a little high, so I don't want to start sticking out register-wise. So I'm probably not going to go beyond the second string. So I have G, D, G, D, G. So I could go hybrid pick. Four-note grouping. That's starting to sound kind of big. Well, I can lean it out. And it's one of my favorite things to do. Take a big, thick power chord. Take out some of the inside voices. Watch what I'm going to do. Here are all four voices. Pretty thick. I'm going to leave the second voice out. Now, when I talk about voices, it's just like a choir. The ladies sing first, and we're gentlemen, so ladies first. So the highest note in your structure will be the first voice. So the second voice is going to be this D. So I'll leave that out. <laughs> Hear the difference? <laughs> now I'm going to leave the third voice out. <laughs> now I'm going to leave the second and third voices out. <laughs> You could go on and on and look at all the possibilities of a structure that you're recorded. Here I'm playing in this area, root, root, fifth, root. Now, when you move to the C, you could just go up five frets and see all the same stuff. Or you can look at your other group here, where it's a fifth string rooted power chord. A C power chord is going to be C and G. Again, one and five in the key of C. So you want to visualize all of the C's and G's in this formation. Well, it's easy. Here's G, C, G, C, G, C. So you have all of these power chords. And that's a big six-note voice. And that's a little muddy for what we're after here. So you pick...
There are all those great sounds. Now, you've got to become proficient at hybrid picking to get this to come off the right way. If you're not used to hybrid picking, just take a voicing, and we'll go with a cleaner sound so you can hear the voices. Here was this G5. We had root, fifth, root, fifth, root. Place your pinky, ring, and middle fingers on the second, third, and fourth strings, respectively. If you don't have any fingernails, start growing them out and just get them a little bit out over the tips of the fingers or even and sand them smooth with some 600 grit sandpaper over a nail file. They really help you get that edge to balance out with the pick because if you're just using the flesh on your fingers, it can sound a little muffled and you don't have any control, any variety of dynamics and tonal colors. Now what's important is that your fingers stay curled and that you pull them back toward your palm. The pick goes out toward your left knee. So you have this pinching effect. And the follow-through is what's important. Don't do this. I want you to look at the right hand in the video. Don't pop your hand out away from the strings. Keep your hand there and move your fingers in toward your palm, actually toward your wrist, and the pick down toward the switch or toward your left knee, your left leg, the floor. And then, and less is more. Your natural tendency is to play real hard with the pick. Well, play very lightly with the pick and balance the voices with your fingers. That way, you can actually practice doing arpeggios, all kinds of good things. And it'll take a while for you to get used to using your little finger. But hey, it's on your hand, so you might as well use it, okay? So try this approach. Use these power chords, and you can take this basic lick that was in the Boogie Woogie rhythm and put another rhythm guitar part on top. You wouldn't have to use it all the way through, but it allows you to take the tune somewhere. Have fun.